Hi everyone, Shane Armin Rowe here. Today we're going to install Genshin Impact, the free to play action RPG on your Steam Deck. There are a few gotchas with this game and we're going to be installing it externally from the non-Steam game Proton Prefix to ensure no insufficient space issues occur during install or during future updates. We'll get started by going to desktop mode and opening your web browser of choice. I'm using Brave here, but any browser will do. And navigate to the Genshin Impact website. Link will be in the description below. Scroll down to the PC download button and click it. Download the installer to your downloads folder. Once it's completed, go ahead and close your browser. We're done with that. Now I'm using GE Proton 7-55, the latest at the time of this video. And if you do not have Proton Up QT and GE Proton 7-55 or higher installed, go ahead and check out the link in the upper right to see my tutorial on installing Proton Up QT and a version of GE Proton. Now open Steam, click add a game, then add a non-Steam game, browse to your downloads folder. Be sure to change the file types to all and select the installer exe. Now find the new Steam game entry. Use the search box to help you out. Just start typing the game's name and it'll filter it out for you. Select the entry and then the game's gear icon. Under compatibility, check force the use of a specific Steam Play compatibility. Then choose your GE Proton. Again, I'm using 7-55. If you just installed GE Proton and it doesn't show up in this dropdown, exit Steam completely, then go back in. It should now appear properly. If no dropdown appears under the force compatibility, reboot your deck and try again. Known bug, after you reboot, it should appear then. Now we need to decide where we're going to install the game. The full game takes about 75 gigabytes of space and more if you plan on installing other languages, DLC, etc. So let's plan on 100 gigabytes of free space just to be safe. If you have a 64 gigabyte or maybe even a 256 gigabyte Steam Deck, you're probably not going to want to install this on your internal storage, so you're going to use a micro SD card. If you want to install on your internal 512 gigabyte or one terabyte SSD, we're gonna cover that too. Let's open up the Dolphin File Manager. If you have not configured your Dolphin File Browser using my Tricks and Tips video for 2023, I'll link that in the upper right. I highly recommend you do so before continuing because I'm going to rely on a lot of special configurations to ease the burden of this install. So make sure you have a split view with the compat data folder on one side. There will be a path in the description, but hopefully you set up a custom places for that folder like you see here. On the other side, open the SSD home slash deck folder or the root of your micro SD card, depending on which one you're going to want to install to. Let's create a folder called games. As you can see, I already have one of these on my one terabyte internal SSD. I could flip over to the micro SD card. Again, if you haven't done my tricks and tips for Dolphin, you may have to scroll down to see your removable devices. Create the games folder on the root of the micro SD card. Now, do you have to call it games? Does it have to be on the root of your storage? No, but if you don't know where you can safely make a large storage folder, just put it where we're doing it here. It's guaranteed to work. The rest of this tutorial will assume you're following this convention and will simply call it the games folder from now on. Great, leave Dolphin right where it is and bring Steam back up to front and click play on your new non-Steam game pointing to the Genshin installer. When the installer screen comes up, leave the window open and flip over to Dolphin. In the compat data folder, sort by modified by if you're not already sorted that way, and look for a long numbered folder that was created just now, or at least in the last couple of minutes. Go inside that folder and then click into the PFX folder, followed by the drive C folder. 
Now, on the other file list where the games folder exists, left drag the games folder over to the drive C location. From the pop-up, select link here. A strange looking games folder will appear. This is called a symbolic link or sim link. Essentially, this is a virtual folder that doesn't really exist in this drive C location, but rather exists in the root of your micro SD card or the home slash deck folder. We do this to avoid any sort of size limits imposed by the Proton prefix limitations. You can now close the Dolphin file manager. We're done with that. Back to the Genshin Impact installer. Expand the advanced tab and let's change the install location from the default to our virtual Simlink games folder. Now we're ready to install the game. The initial download is almost 60 gigabytes at the time of this video, so go get a sandwich while you wait. Once the installation finishes downloading, it will start unzipping so you can have soup with your sandwich. After unzipping, it will verify the files, so have a bag of chips with that sandwich too. Bottom line, don't expect to start this and play over your lunch hour. <laughs> Slow going. If you don't have an Extreme Class SD card and you're installing there, tack on more time. After the entire install process is done, the full game, at least at the time of the video, is a whopping 62 gigabytes. And remember, no shader caches are included here. I don't know how big the cache will be when all is said and done, but I would assume at least one gigabyte will eventually be needed. That puts the total cost of space ownership of this game to be 63 gigabytes before any DLC updates, whatever. All right, enough, let's launch this bad boy. But let's not do it from desktop mode. Let's close the launcher and select exit program, then confirm. Close Steam and return to game mode. Let's go ahead and rename that entry. Told you a mouse and keyboard would be extremely useful for this tutorial. If you have Decky Loader and Steam Grid DB plugin, let's go ahead and set your game art now. Okay, now that your artwork is set and you've renamed the thing, let's hit play. Whoa, it's asking you to install again? Well, in a strange way, that sort of makes sense because we're still pointing to the installer, not to the actual game. So from desktop mode, let's go ahead and enter the game's properties, click browse, and let's go and find launcher.exe inside the Genshin Impact game folder. This is located inside the games folder where you installed it. So we'll navigate to games, We'll go inside the Genshin Impact folder. We'll look for launcher.exe. Make sure your file type is selected to all files. And we'll select that. Now we can go ahead and close and run the game again. <sighs> now you get to the launcher again. I hope there's a game in here somewhere. Click launch. And if all works out, the game will boot. If you don't have an account, you'll need to register. So go do that. Now you're ready to go ahead and log in. Enjoy all the first run agreements. I would read the terms and services if I were you. Free to play games. I, hey, don't trust the terms of service unless you read them. More downloads with verifications will likely occur now. I bought a house with less time and paperwork than this. <laughs> Finally,
Finally, we touch the screen to start. If this is your first visit, enjoy the unskippable intro video along with choosing your player and more unskippable videos. <laughs> oh, by the way, so far it's all mouse and keyboard control, no controller support, right? So you're probably, if you don't have a mouse and keyboard, you're probably holding that Steam button down, trying to use the trackpad and the triggers to get around. Please, I beg you, if you're gonna do anything outside the norm on the Steam Deck, get a cheap mouse and keyboard. It's gonna solve a lot of your problems. Once you're in the game proper and you can actually see and control your character, hit escape and change your control type to controller, unless you're really dying to play with the mouse and keyboard. You'll want to set invert Y if that's how you roll, which I sure do, while you're in that screen. I'm gonna be honest, the UI is confusing. The A and B buttons are correctly labeled, but B is often select and A is usually back. Trust me, what you're not seeing on this video is a lot of stuff I cut out showing me fumbling around with the UI. Maybe you get used to it, but I guarantee you, if I were actually playing this game, I would be going into Steam input and swapping these buttons around. We're not actually gonna play this game. <laughs> you can do that on your own. Um, as this is software as a service game, I would 100% recommend you exit the game cleanly every time. What do I mean by that? Hit the menu button and then hold X to quit. That brings you back to the start screen. Tap the power button on the screen and confirm your exit. This will then take you back to the launch screen. Click the X to leave and you should return to Steam. Who knows if there's cloud syncing going on or what's going on, all I know is when you have software that's always online and it's always as a service like this, you always want to make sure you exit cleanly. Don't just decide you're done playing for the day, hit the Steam button and exit the game from there. I would not do that. All right, we're gonna do a bonus tutorial now and that is adding a non-English language. This is by request of a fellow Reddit dweller. After that, we're gonna be discussing from a technical standpoint how all of this is set up and how you'll want to remove it later. If this is not of interest to you, please like, subscribe, hit the bell before you leave, and thanks so much for watching. All right, let's get that language pack. These things are big, about nine to 12 gigabytes each. So add that to your total cost of storage ownership. Get back into the game proper. Once you can control your player, hit the menu button and hit the settings gear. Go down to languages and voice over language. Choose your language. I chose Japanese during my first time through. Let's pick Chinese and see how it works. After your nine to 11 gigabyte download, and this is not super speedy, what else can we eat while we wait? We got soup, sandwich, chips, and a drink. How about dessert? White macadamia nut cookies? Don't mind if I do. It will ask you if you want to change to the new language. You say yes, and you're good to go. If that's what you tuned in for, thanks for watching and take care. Now on to the last part, how to clean up after yourself if and when you wanna reclaim your 80 plus gigabytes of storage space. First, make note of the compat data folder number from Dolphin. It's always random, what you saw here for me isn't going to be the same number for you. If you're a wise person, you'll start a spreadsheet or a Google Keep Note or whatever it is that you use, and anytime you install a non-Steam Gamer app, record the number and the name of the title you installed so you can always identify the folder later. Second, there will be a shader cache folder with the same number. When you go to clean up, that numbered folder will have to go too. That could be up to a gigabyte. I've seen huge shader cache folders, folks. Finally, wherever you put that games folder, once you remove the game from Steam, delete compat data and the shader caches, the game is still there. <laughs> so you could offload that to storage somewhere in case you ever wanna play the game again, put it on a big fat, external hard drive, right? You got 80 gigs, you don't wanna download it again, offload it, and then you'll be able to unload it back again without having to do a great download. But if you're just desperate for space, which is usually what people are doing when they're uninstalling stuff, go ahead and nuke the folder inside of games that represents the game. That's it, you'll have all of that space reclaimed. I will provide a link in the description to my video that goes into great detail about how non-Steam games work and how you must clean up after yourself when you're ready to remove the non-Steam game proper. All right, that's it. If this video helped you out, please like, sub, and pop that bell for future video notifications. Your feedback is important, so please leave a comment. I read them all even if I don't respond to them all. I'm Shane Armonroe. Thanks so much for watching, and take care.